Hey everybody, welcome to our Thursday night training tonight. Christina is bringing us some awesome content. So I'm gonna hand it over to her so she can give a little intro of what video she picked, why she picked it, and then we can get our training on. So make sure you have a pencil or pen and a uh, piece of paper or notebook so you can take notes. And it's um, on you, girl. All right, so um, I'm talking about Facebook ads tonight. Um, it's something I started playing with a few months ago, and then I realized that it can get complex fast, and I wanted to learn a little bit more about it before I started putting more money into it. Um, so in preparing for this, uh, it can get really complicated. So I'm going to just try and keep it to the simple stuff that is useful for us. Um, and then also give you um, a little bit more of an overview than I couldn't find like one video that was encompassing all the sort of basic things that I wanted to talk about. So I have one example that I think she does a pretty good job of. Um, and then I'm going to kind of go over a few things that I've learned in addition to that from watching other videos. Um, and I do have a PowerPoint, which is going to have some more information that we'll post at the end that'll have some additional video links that I would encourage everybody to watch because I think they're useful. Um, there is no way to watch them all, of course, in one call. So um, the first thing I wanted to do is just kind of go over what Facebook ads are and a few of the basic options because she's only going to really talk about one of them so that you know what to focus on. Because um, it's really easy to get really complicated really fast and have, have a, no idea where to start. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen first. I can do that Paulina right and then just go into Facebook first. Okay, so I'm gonna share screen first and share my desktop. And then I will just show you really quick. Um, Okay, can you guys see a YouTube video on my screen right now? Okay. Um, okay, so let me first go and just show you a couple basic things. So I'm going to go to my like page to do this. because That's the easiest thing to do. How do I get? Go away. Move that over. Okay, so when I first started, I started boosting posts from my like page because that's what they show you to do right away. I mean, that's, you know, like what becomes obvious is a little boost button in the lower right. Um, and it's a really quick and easy way to make an ad, but there are a lot of limitations with the boost post. Um, I did it a few times and I, what I found was that I would get some likes and then you could actually see those likes once people start clicking on your um, on your ad. Um, but I wasn't really getting much engagement in addition to that. Um, and now I've learned kind of why. So I was using it as a way just to get new people to look at my stuff. Um, and then all the people that liked that post, I would then reach out to them. One of the problems, of course, is that if you're not friends with them, then um, they may not get your message. Now I did get a, you know, a handful of people that did respond to my message and then ended up liking my Facebook page and um, my like page, but um, it's still difficult because a lot of times it's just gonna go to their, their other message inbox and they may never see your message. Um, so the other thing with Boost Post that's a problem is that we're gonna get into a little bit about tailoring your audience and Boost Post does not allow you to do much so let me just do this one for example and you can do so much custom tailoring with audiences from facebook ads and that's really what you should learn most about is it's the same as what we talk about for anything else is who's your audience who's your target who, what are they like what are their interests and you can pick those up in an ad and you can put those in specifically for your audience and tailor your post to whoever you want the way you would want to. Um, boosting is limited though because when you, you create an audience, you're only um, allowed to pick keywords. So you can see there's a list here of options and I can pick these keyword options, but I'm only limited to 10 of them and it may not be something that I actually want. So um, you're also limited in pretty much Everything you do with boosting your post is a very quick but limited way to do it. So my recommendation is just to avoid the boost button. Um, so your other options are to go in here and create an ad. And what you're gonna see 
is that you have an ads manager and a power editor. And it took me a while to figure out what I should be using and why. So if you go up here in the upper left, it says ads manager. Um, if I click that, there's a power editor. I'm not gonna go into a lot of the major differences. I'll put that on the slides for you guys to look at later. Basically, they have now, Ads Manager has become more flexible and more powerful, but every, every video that I've watched has said just use Power Editor. Uh, the differences between them, Ad Manager is not gonna give you much, really a benefit. Um, Power Editor has more flexibility. You're allowed more characters in your post. You can save things so that you can come back to them later. Um, it just basically gives you more flexibility. So from, as you're learning to do ads, just use Learn Power Editor and don't worry about any of the rest. Um, I think that based on what I've learned, there really hasn't been a lot of positive benefits from having to learn all of them and figure out the difference between them. Um, okay, so based on that, oh, the other thing I wanted to go over really quick before I show you the video is a really cool way to um, start thinking about your audience. Um, so you know you guys get those sponsored messages on your own Facebook page where it's an ad and it has sponsored across the top. Um, I'm going to see if I can find one or on your, sorry, on your, on your news feed. Um, so you can use those sponsored posts that you're getting on your news feed to start figuring out how people are targeting to you. And then use those keywords because clearly if, if it's an appropriate ad, for example, and you actually were interested in that, what did they, what was their audience? and how did they find you? And not only does that give you an understanding of how the ads are being used and marketed um, or how the audience are working, but it also can give you some keywords that you can start keeping track of for what worked for you and use those to find people that are like you because if it worked for you and you want to attract people like you, you might as well use the same keywords, right? So the way to do that, this is a sponsored ad on my newsfeed. Um, see a Broadway show with Neil Patrick Harris. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> anyway, up in this upper right is there's a drop down menu. Um, and you can click why am I seeing it? When you do that, it pops up why you were seeing this. So it's showing you how the ad was targeting you. Um, because Neil Patrick Harris wants to reach women between 18 and older who live or were recently in the US. So that was a really broad category. There wasn't any particular keyword per se that he was targeting. Um, sometimes you will get keywords. I was just going to see if I could find a couple really quick. Bonfire t-shirt fundraising for everyone. Let's see what they are seeing. Um, they want to reach people interested in GoFundMe. I've done a GoFundMe campaign before, so I'm probably you know, a part of that page or something like that. Um, so you can, you can see um, lots of things like that going through these ads that way. Um, you'll also see a lot of times that it's targeting friends of people who like X and you happen to be a friend of somebody who liked their product or um, something like that. So anyway, it's a good way to learn what works for you, how people are targeting you, and then utilize that for targeting other people. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show, share the video, and um, she's just going through one option of um, how to create an ad. I think it's a pretty good example, and she kind of goes through a little bit about like step-by-step -step how to do it. And then when, it, when we finish the video, I'm gonna go ahead and cover some other things that she doesn't cover, uh, depending on time. Okay. So let's see if this will work. Jeanette, please work. Okay. Is that playing for everybody? Can you hear it? Time out. So you can't see it or hear it? Or you just can't hear it? We can see it, we just don't hear anything yet. I wonder why you can't hear anything. Oh, because you have headphones on. Oh, okay, well, let me take that off. So I want you 
Can you hear now? So cool. It's just really low. Can you put the volume up a little? Oh, now it's on your. My volume is all the way up. Maybe that's hers. Hold on. There's also some feedback that I don't understand. Let's see, volume's all the way up. My volume's all the way up. Is that any better? That's a little bit real. Seems really low. Is this working? Do you want to try playing it, Paulina? Okay, yeah, send me um, the link. I'll, like, I'll just put the it and send me the link and I'll try to play it from my computer and maybe it'll work better. I'm going to put it in the chat window. Okay, perfect. I don't know why it's playing so low. You need a website. Why not do it yourself? With Wix.com, you can use artificial design. Let's see if it works better. Today we're going to talk about Facebook ads. And we are going to start your Facebook ad. And it's going to be as simple as I can possibly can. But I also want to make sure that you're doing it so that you don't mess some stuff up. So, <laughs> so I want you to go in. See this little, um, this little arrow, this drop down arrow? I want you to click on that. Go down to manage ads. Now, there's a couple ways to get into managing your ads or the ads manager, um, but that's the way. That's just the way I do it. Now, once you get into the ads manager, you are going to see this cute little button, and it says create ad. Guess what? Don't push the green button. <laughs> Basically, what that does is it has you immediately create an ad um, without any chance of saving your work for later. Um, and, you know, we are all busy. So we may not be able to, uh, we may not be able to finish what we started <laughs> because that happens all the time, right? So instead of creating your ad that way, I suggest going up to this little menu drop down um, right here called Ads Manager. Look for the Power Editor and click on Power Editor. The Power Editor is basically like a little subsection of Ads Manager where you can do all of your ad creation and save your work. And then it doesn't, nothing happens until you actually review the changes and, and finish the process. So this is a great way, if you are very busy like I am, to create your ads. Now, there are three steps to ad creation. There is creating a campaign, creating an ad set, and then actually creating an ad. So this is, so like if you're going to be running an ad for your free groups, and you wanna use the same information every time you just want to change the picture or something that's that's why this is created this way and that's why there's three separate steps to creating that so you first start with your campaign which is like your folder and then you have your ad set which is kind of like a group within that folder and then ads which is a file within that group within that folder does that make sense okay it is what it is so hopefully it makes sense. Let's move on. First, let's create a campaign. And this campaign I'm going to call free challenge groups, okay? Um, auction is fine. You can change clicks to website. You could do um, website conversions, which is, which is what I'm gonna do today. Um, and then choose an ad set. So we are going to create a new ad. So this is going to be my uh, April free group. Okay. And then my new ad, I'm going to name 
seen this ad um, building confidence challenge. Okay, so there you go. So now we just hit create. So there we go. We've started the campaign. We've started our free challenge group campaign. So now um, we can go in and create our ad set. So we see everything here. We can set a spending limit. So I'll set it at a hundred dollars. Just to do that. So I'm going to close that off. So now we see we have our campaign. And you, I'm sorry, I switched to that little, the little pencil button. So to close that off. Okay, so next, we've set up our campaign. So next is our ad set. So we just go, boop, 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 ad set. Um, you'll see it's asking for a conversion pixel. See this little warning? Pixels are a completely separate thing. I, there is, I can't even explain the whole pixel thing. There's, it is used in retargeting and remarketing, and I'm still learning about all that. It's way over all of our heads. Let's not worry about that today, okay? <laughs> so let's just keep it simple. All right, so you push the little button. Now this little um, folder opens up, and you see we are going to create our ad set. So, we are going to look at first, we're going to skip all this stuff. So you see the name, the optimized for conversions, don't worry about that. We're going to see the budget and the schedule. So my daily budget, let's say it's $10, okay? Um, actually, you can even do, for the free groups, you can even do as low as $5 or whatever you want to do. So let's say $5. Now, I'm going to have it start um, on you know, on whatever day you want to start it on, and then you can have it end on a certain day. So it's going to start, the group starts on Monday, so I'm going to have it end on Sunday. Because it's a free group, they don't have to buy anything, so that's fine. Now this ad scheduling, I was tempted to do this, but I was encouraged not to because um, give Facebook the chance to figure out when you you know, when is a good time during the day. So you could, you could choose, you know, oh, and, and it's only if you're on a lifetime budget. So don't even worry about ad scheduling, okay? So you're just going to run your ads all the time, and that's fine. Now, um, audience. You can create a custom audience that you use all the time. So, which I have created a couple different audiences, but I'm just going to... Um, just do a different, I'm just going to create a new, um, like not even going to worry about creating an actual audience, so that's something that you can save for future use, but today, for today's purposes, I'm just going to keep it simple, because um, I'm going to assume that you're not even sure if you're going to run ads all the time. This is just to keep it really simple, just to test the waters and to see what's going on. So, now it looks like everyone in the United States is going to be getting this. Now you can hone this in. You could do just, you know, certain states. You could do just Florida. You could do just Connecticut. You know, whatever, whatever it is. You could add in Canada. You could, you know, add different countries. My suggestion is is to keep it as small as possible. You know, I do the United States sometimes, the U.S. and Canada, and um, you can actually run two separate ads to target Canada and then target the U.S. and then target the U.K. because let's say Beachbody's going to open in the U.K. at some point, um, you know, or whatever. So you can actually target different locations, um, countries, or you can even get to just cities. You can even target just cities if you wanted to. Um, but for me, I like the whole U.S. Okay. My age group, I like to just do 22 to 45. You can choose whatever age group you want. Think about your target market and who is your target market. Um, I'm targeting women. So if you look over here, this audience definition, it is changing. So now we're down, we were like over a billion, and now we're down to 53 million people, right? So I want to get that even smaller. I want this number to be around like 200 to 500,000. Okay, so that's what we're going to keep an eye on. We're going to keep an eye on 
this number, this potential reach number, and trying to get it down lower. So we're going to change this to English. I want to only speak the English people because I don't know any other language. So now we're down to 50, 000, or 50 million people. So there you go. Detail. So now this is cool. So we can, um, oh, if you're Spanish speaking, you could also be Spanish speaking since you have Spanish, um, you can do English and Spanish. So we have Spanish programs, you know, programs in Spanish like 21 Day Fix. That's awesome. Now, the goal of this free group, the way I like my free groups to be, to, like, I think of them as a way to introduce myself to new people, a way to develop relationships with people that I already know. Um, maybe they have been in a challenge group before, maybe they've never been in a challenge group before, but this is my way of giving something free, of doing something to show people what I can offer and what I can do and what I can do for them. So I'm thinking, and then my, uh, so, so I have to think of, about what my end goal is when I'm looking at creating an ad. So my end goal is to get the people from the free group into a challenge group. And then from the challenge group, either to continue on with Shakeology and their fitness in the Fit Family Tribe, um, my ongoing support group, or to get them to be a coach or both, preferably both. <laughs> So I have to think about the end result is basically a coach. And so who am I looking at? Who am I looking at becoming a coach? Who do I want to be best friends with for the rest of, you know, my coaching career, my life, basically. <laughs> and I want to think about those people. So what kind of people do I want to, to be connected to? I want people um, with certain behaviors. So I want people who are you know, motivated, right? I want, um, this is interest. See how it says interest? So I want people, um, maybe soccer moms, you know, like soccer moms is a great, um, a great target demographic. Some people demographic, that works. So now look at this. Now it's 12 million people, okay? So I also like people that are interested in marriage. I want, I like married people. I like people that are interested in romance in um, child care. Um, let's see, I like people that are in the family and relationships. Um, wine. Well, I'm going to put wine in here because I love wine. So uh, their behaviors are wine. So they're purchasing um, behaviors. They're actually buying wine. So that's cool because behaviors are really good. Behaviors tell you a lot. Not just what they're interested in, but what they're actually doing. Okay, so that, that gives you a basic thing. And then you want to narrow your audience. So now we're down to 42 million. I'm all oh, very well. So now let's marry, um, marry. Let's <laughs> kind of hone in on this. So we want to, um, we want to narrow, see this narrow audience. We want to narrow our audience. So we want to take at least, so they are, they have at least one of these and they're going to have something else. So now they are also going to have, let's see, I want, I like people who, they like their online buyers. That's one of their behaviors. Their online buyer, they like to buy online, right? Um, and I want to narrow it further. I want them to be in, into health and wellness, right? Health and wellness. Um, health and wellness buyers. There you go. So that's a behavior. That's awesome. So that now brings us down to um, 560,000. So that's cool. Let's see if we can narrow this down even further. So they are, you know, something like this. They're online buyers. And then I also want them to be. Da, da, da. Let's say business. They're interested. They're also interested in business. What does that do? Ooh, three hundred thousand people. There you go. Perfect. So I think that is a perfect, perfect, um, you know, targeted market. Okay. So you know what? I think it's so perfect. I'm gonna save this audience, and I am going to call this my coach. Uh, audience, or U.S., U.S. market, there you go, okay, perfect, so there you go, so that's going to be who I am personally targeting, um, the place
placement, let me just give Facebook an automatic placement, uh, or actually no placement, we're talking about placement, sorry. We don't want Instagram right now. If you wanna get into Instagram ads, um, do some homework on that. We don't need audience network, that's something different, and we don't need desktop right call. So you, I'm sorry, you do wanna choose your placement. So you want the mobile news feed, and you want the desktop news feed. You don't need the right call, okay? And mobile devices, is fine and you want to keep the bit amount on automatic and there you go so that is good so we've actually narrowed it down even further to 290,000 people because we are just on the mobile newsfeed and the desktop newsfeed which is what we want so it's perfect so even better so almost 300,000 people perfect Okay, so um, awesome. So we're going to push the or click on the pencil and push that over. Now we want to actually create our ad. So this is the building confidence challenge. So this is where we create what everybody is going to see. So we want to choose our page. So our page is our like page. So I'm, I run a couple different pages. So I'm going to choose my coaching page. Now, um, we're not doing Instagram, so we're not even looking at that. This is an ad with an image. I personally think that video is where it's at. And I eventually will get into more video ads. But right now, I'm just going to do an image just for um, getting this video to you as fast as possible. <laughs> so what I did is I have my own website. Um, you don't have to have this. You could have it linked to anything. But I do have my own website and I um, created a page on my website called Build Better Confidence. So I am going to so this is where I'm sending people. So when they click on the link to my ad, it's gonna send them to my website. This is great because then they can check out more about me. They can be like, oh wait, on my website, I can go check out more stuff. Or maybe they won't even realize that. And so they'll just read this little snippet and then they will click here to join the Facebook group. So that is how I want to do that. So I'm gonna copy that website URL, put that in there, perfect, it turns blue, that means we're good. And then if I wanted, um, okay, so this display URL is already, just, so we're gonna do, just in case, my actual website is what I want to be displayed, just in case. Now the cool thing about this is you've connected it to your coach, your, you know, your business page, so it's actually gonna have a like page option here, which is awesome because then if people don't really want to um, do your challenge, but they really like what you got going on, they can click like page. And so then you can get some likes out of the deal. So that's awesome. And now the text. So this is going to be something catchy, something like, um, have you ever avoided, because we're talking about building better confidence, right? Avoided social settings or fear of what people will think of you. Have you ever considered, uh, have you ever not asked for a promotion because you didn't want to be rejected? Um, do you consider yourself shy? And then the headline would be Join my free seven day confidence building challenge. Something like that. Ah, challenge. Okay. And then the description.
description is going to go below. And don't worry, the image is coming, okay? <laughs> that will be after we do this. Okay, so the description is going to be, um, if you answered, something like this. I mean, you guys get creative. If you answered yes to any of those questions or this post is making you think a little bit, I would love for you to join us. What have you got to lose? Nothing. Um, click the link to learn more. Okay. So the image, now you, um, let's see, here is my image. Okay, now the image is a little funky. So I gotta crop it. Um, you can create your image in Canva. That's one of my favorite places to create Facebook ad images. So there we go. That's just going to update. Perfect. The call to action button is to learn more. So when they click on learn more, it will send them to that website, this website URL. So there's learn more. Perfect. So there you go. So here is your ad. You just created your ad. Have you ever avoided those settings? There you go. You've got everything. Okay, it was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now to get it going, you have to now review the changes. So you click on review changes. Now there is a warning. Now the warning has to do with the conversion pixel. So please choose a conversion pixel. Um, Try to apply changes on items. Yeah. So I'm just going to let Facebook apply the changes that are necessary to those items because we're not worried about pixels. They, you know, if they, like, it's not a big deal right now. Okay. Let's just get going, get some ads out there, and worry about pixels later. <laughs> All right. So there you go. We're going to continue. It's going to apply these changes. Changes, go, 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 go. This is so exciting. And now we are done. We know what the error is. It's all about pixels. So there you go. So you are done. And now you can go back to Ads Manager. And you will see it will be pending review. So let it load everything. And then it says, But it's free challenge group. Is that what we just created? <laughs> free, yeah, free challenge group. It's not delivering right now because it needs to be reviewed. And um, so we will keep an eye on it. Right now I have a couple other. I already have one going on. So I have two ads that are active right now. I have a sneak peek campaign. And then I also have um, this, but this building that are confidence that I just went with you, but I, um, I'm going to say no. Um, anyway, so there you go. So I love running ads on Facebook. I get so much, um, I get so much from it. I feel like it really works well. And I am excited for you guys to start running your own ads. So give me some feedback and let me know your thoughts. And we will go from there. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Sweet. So how much time do we have, Paulina? Do you know? How long do you want to go for? <laughs> well, I have some things I want to talk about, but I would prioritize them depending on how much time we have. Um, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, cool. Then, okay, so a couple things, just um, reflections from what she said compared to what some other videos have said that I've watched. Um, I think she put on there like a hundred bucks or something. You don't have to spend much on these ads to start with. Um, a lot of the more experienced, I don't know, uh, higher level coaches spend a lot of money on ads, but you can spend five bucks and still get a lot of return on it. Um, 
she said something about having not scheduling ads, like just letting Facebook schedule the time. That's been the only time I've heard that. And I think depending on whether you use ad manager or power editor, it might vary whether or not you can actually do that. Um, I've heard from most people, if you're a coach, to go ahead and schedule it if you know there's a targeted window that you would actually like people, the people that are your target market would be online. Um, for example, not placing ads to run over the weekend because people tend not to be on their computers and not busy doing other things on the weekends um, and kind of keeping those things in mind. So um, that's something that you could play with and you get feedback on your ads to see when people were looking, time of day, age groups, all of that stuff. So you can kind of play with it and see what happens when you don't set the time versus when you do. Um, but seems like setting the time would actually be beneficial. Um, there was a gauge when she was talking about defining her audience that she was looking at for what, how many people potentially her audience could be. A couple of the videos I watched said, try and keep that, especially in the middle or when you're new and you are kind of getting used to all this and you're not necessarily trying to spend a huge amount of money to reach a million people or you don't have a really, really defined specific target audience to go ahead and keep that meter in the middle. That's your goal to keep adding things until that meter is in the middle of the green was kind of the general recommendation if you're, you're new. Um, one of the other resounding kind of feedbacks from coaches was not to think of using ads to sell things. Use ads to drive people to your page and to you. And in fact, ads can be much more effective if used with free groups and free offerings because people are much more likely to click on things like your page and interact with you if you have a free something that you're offering, you're also more likely to share it. Um, and a lot of what ads can do for you is not only drive people to you, but from Facebook's perspective, increase engagement on your site so that if you're getting ads with a bunch of people clicking on your stuff, even if that's not necessarily resulting in an immediate challenge pack sale, your future posts that are not ads will get boosted as a result. So if you can think about using ads to kind of drive people to you and in increase engagement on your like page, then you can use that to, from there, you know, take it into creating relationships with people. Um, there are lots of different types of ads. She clicked and gave an example of a web conversion. That was her example. But she obviously had a website to drive people to. That was her purpose. Most of us are not going to have a separate website to, that we're going to try and drive people to. So um, the more common ones to use, let me see if I can share my screen again and show you. Um, there's really only a couple that you might want to consider initially. Um, the first, let's see, I just pulled it up. Nope. So when you, uh, my screen's in my way. No, create a campaign. Um, objective. So she did website conversions. That's the one she used. Um, the most likely one that you're going to use is post page post engagement. That is you want to offer a free group or, you know, something that you are trying to get people to engage with you in some way. Um, so that's going to probably be your most common one. It's, um, also a low cost, um, way of getting likes and comments and shares. So of all the different options that you could do, it's kind of the biggest bang, ba biggest bang for your buck kind of thing. Um, and so any, any ad that you might be interested in running, you're probably gonna run it that way. The other one that you might wanna consider, maybe, is the page like. Um, that's basically targeted to get people to like your page. And while the most of us, like we are, we are not a, you know, go out there and get as many likes from any random person kind of coaching group. When you're brand new and you have a brand new page that has no likes, some of the recommendations were to do this early when you're building your like page, because when, when anybody who doesn't know you comes across an advertisement and then they go to your page and you have two people, your mom and your dad that are on your page, they might be turned away from that. So one school of thought is do an initial couple ads just to get people 
and it, it they're not going to be high quality people they may not be something that ever turns into something but it could be a way just to kind of get those initial likes up and then from there don't use that anymore because they're really not high quality likes they're not necessarily somebody that's ever going to engage with you but just like if you see a restaurant you've never seen before a lot of people standing outside of it you might want to actually go to it so that's one school of thought um okay another thing i wanted to show you from my examples was how to evaluate your ads um there are a lot of statistics and you can kind of go through it and learn based on practice what works and doesn't work for you but i just wanted to show you a quick rundown <coughs> of um what what to kind of look at in the beginning so these are some ads that i have done in the past and it shows me how many people were reached um and it tells you at the top what each of these headings means if you don't know you can just go roll over it so um, how many people actually engaged in that campaign? How many people were reached? So at least saw it, even if they didn't engage. And then how much I spent. And what the, what's important that you might not initially know to look for is, before I get to there, I've clicked on performance and clicks. So in, in this drop-down menu of things that you could look at, performance and clicks is what I've, looked, is what I've clicked on. And I'm scrolling over here to CPC. This is cl uh, clicks per, uh, cost per click, sorry. So for each ad that you run, it's gonna give you how much it costs you per click to run that ad based on your engagement. And there's another video that I'm posting in the, um, the Facebook ads uh, PowerPoint that I'm gonna post that goes into this a little bit more and gives some good sort of how to plan ahead as to what you want to spend, what your target audience is, and what your, you know, what your ending, what your return is, so you can decide whether or not it's working for you. Um, but one of the good recommendations is when you run ads, if you're looking at this number, you want to keep it less than 30 clicks uh, cost per click, 30 cents cost per click. Um, if you're running less than 20, you're doing pretty good, and the lower and lower it goes, the better you're doing. Um, so it doesn't matter how much you spend, you're going to get this cost per click. And um, so you can see that my, I did a random super time sensitive join me now post. It was just a picture. I spent about 30 seconds creating that picture and it was over 30 cents cost per click. But um, I did this sneak peek country heat video, which was just me, you know, doing the country heat video. And I got 20 cents cost per click. So it went down a lot. The other thing is video is going to be much, much higher response. Like people are going to respond to video much more. And some of the videos said, don't, you know, if you have the time and can just always do videos, you're going to get more response, more engagement anyway, just do videos. Um, so if you can, it's a good rec It seems to be highly recommended. The other cool thing that you can do with your, um, when you're looking at your breakdown of how things went is look at the breakdown by different groups so you can get an idea for the people that are actually engaging with you and hone in on your market better that's something I've actually struggled with because I'm like who is my market I don't know if I should be marketing you know single moms at home because it's not who I am uh, should I be marketing you know what age group should I be marketing um, so you can, for example, click on age, and then anything you've run, it'll tell you by age group how you did. So it'll tell you how many people actually engaged. So for this post, I had 12, you know, the younger age group engaged much more. It reached that many more people in the, in the younger age group. And then it also give you a cost breakdown down. So if you go over to the cost um, per click again, gives you a cost breakdown per age. So when you go create your new posts, if you learn from this, then you can start targeting age groups based on what your post is and how well you're performing in those different age groups. You know that your, you know, your, your posts are, you want to target a younger group and it's effective, then that's good news for you. Um, okay. Um, one other thing that was um, a really interesting point that was made in a video was that you can do a dark post. Um, so let's say you're new to this and you wanna see how different audiences respond. Um, 
you can uh, set up like three different ads and run them for $2 each or something and create different audiences to do tests within Facebook and see how you re how people respond. Now, the downside is that Facebook's going to flag, you know, the same exact ad um, and if you keep doing that, they're not going to like it. But they don't, you know, you can do that at least a little bit. Don't get too crazy with it. Um, and you don't want to annoy all the people on your Facebook wall, so you can do what's called a dark post. And it won't pop up on your own newsfeed for all of your people to see multiple times. So that's a useful tool. Um, the other thing to consider is as you're building your like page and you have a lot of likes um, as you're getting more advanced and more far along with that, at any given time, your like page, like <clears throat> save you a thousand likes on your like page. At any given time, only about 1% of the people on your like page are seeing your posts. Even though there's a thousand people, that doesn't mean that all thousand people are seeing your like posts. So another way to use Facebook ads is to boost an ad to only your specific like posts. So if you want to run, um, you know, I have a Black Friday special and you want the thousand people on your like page to see it, that normally only 1% of them would see it, then you could run a special or whatever to your like page and select them as an audience to increase that, um, you know, up to 80% or 90% of your like people to see that post. Um, okay, I think that is most of what I have. Um, there are some, there's a couple videos that I'm posting on that um, PowerPoint for you guys too that goes into more, more about targeting your audience and how to think about keywords. Um, and, you know, like the woman said in the, the video to use behaviors as part of the things that you're targeting, like people who drank wine, that would totally be effective for me. <laughs> um, I think that's a really good tidbit. And um, anyway, so I think that's a basic overview. There's lots and lots of information, but hopefully that gives you guys a rundown of, of what to consider and how to think about Facebook ads. That's what I got. Awesome girl, thank you so much. Um, I think you did a great job, not only sharing that video, but presenting about all the different things you've been learning on um, like pages and ads and the different types of ads and boosting versus you know sponsored ad and, and whatnot. And just sharing us little tips and tricks. Can you hear me better now? Sure, my volume's all the way up. Um, sorry, just my voice, I guess. Can anyone else hear me? You guys are good, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so I think you did a great job. Thank you so much for sharing that with us and um, that PowerPoint you're gonna work on. I'm excited to see that. So just post it in the Diesel Dreamers page and um, definitely start watching more videos on that because it's definitely something I need to focus on, especially in the new year, um, getting my like page out there and connecting with more people that aren't just like my current friends, um, but expanding. So. Awesome, awesome tips and advice. I'm pretty sure everyone got lots from it. So great job, Christina, for um, putting that together for us. Um, does anyone have any specific questions for her or is everybody good? Thanks, you're good. <laughs> okay, awesome. So we'll look forward to that PowerPoint when you have a chance to finish it up, um, just post it. And obviously if anyone has any questions, that they think of later, um, just post it in our successors thread or on the team page. But thank you everybody for hopping on our call. And yeah, I'm gonna close it out. Have a great night. Um, let's have a kick-ass month. Definitely post your goals on the team page and let's end the year off with a bang. Who's with me? Raise your hand. Woo -hoo. Awesome. <laughs> Love you all. Have a great night. Take care, guys. Oh, yes. Picture, picture, picture. Hold on. <laughs> Cannot forget the picture. All right. Let me. Okay. Ready? One, two, three, smile. Awesome. Oh, no. I think some people got kicked off. All right. Well, take care, guys.